Soil gel and gold precipitation are two different techniques to fabricate materials. Soil gel turns a liquid solution into a solid-like gel by forming a network of particles. It is versatile and can make materials with different properties like size, shape, and composition. Gold precipitation removes metal ions from a solution to make a solid in form of a precipitate. It is often used to make magnetic materials, nanoparticles, and catalysts. The soil gel is simple and cheap but can be hard to control the size and shape of the particles. Gold precipitation gives more control over the properties of the materials but can be more complex and time consuming. So, it depends on what you need and what resources you have when choosing between the two. The soil gel process was first developed in the 1940s by Otto Scott to create high quality glass materials. Over time, it was refined and expanded to include the production of ceramics, coatings, and other materials. In material science, the soil gel process is a method for producing solid materials from small molecules, while the co-precipitation has been used for centuries to produce metal powders and alloys. In 1981, the Mazart reported the synthesis of magnetic nanoparticles using this technique, but it wasn't until the mid 20th century that co-precipitation was used to synthesize nanoparticles and other advanced materials. In chemistry, the co-precipitation is the carrying down by the precipitate of substance normally soluble under the condition implied. So both techniques have undergone significant development and refinement over the years and are widely used in centuries such as electronics, catalyst, energy, biomedicine, and other materials. Soil gel technology has many industrial applications, including coatings for improved durability and scratch resistance, catalysts for efficient chemical reactions, optical materials for telecommunications and displays, energy storage materials for batteries and supercapacitors, and sensors for environmental monitoring and medical diagnosis. It continues to be a focus of research and development in many investment industries. Here are some of the applications of gold precipitation in industry. For example, it can be used to make catalysts for a chemical industry, magnetic nanoparticles for data storage and medical imaging, and ceramic powders for electronics and insulation. It is also used as environmental remediation to clean up heavy metals and other pollutants from industrial wastewater and contaminated sites. And it can even be used to make biocompatible materials for drug delivery and tissue engineering. So you see, crop precipitation is a really versatile technique with lots of different applications. So the use of soil gel and co precipitation methods is constantly expanding and being applied in new ways across different industries. Some of their latest ap applications included uh, energy storage devices. Soil gel technique has been used to develop novel materials for energy storage devices such as lithium ion batteries and supercapacitors. Researchers have developed silica-based electrodes with improved capacity and stability for high-performance lithium-ion batteries. Also in medical implants, soldier technique has been used to create functional coatings for medical implants such as titanium implants. Researchers have developed bioactive glass coating using the soldier technique that can enhance the osseointegration or called the process of bone formation around the implant. For co-precipitation, latest study, Co-precipitation is a versatile technique that has been used in various applications. One such application is in the field of cancer therapy, where researchers have used co-precipitation to synthesize magnetic nanoparticles for target drugs delivery. These nanoparticles are coated with the uh, biocompatible polymer and can selectively deliver anti-cancer drugs to the tumor site. Another application of co-precipitation is in the field of gas separation and storage. Researchers have use these techniques to synthesize metal organic uh, frameworks or the MOF with tunable properties and high surface area. This MOF can effectively separate the stored gases such as carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas. So these are only the few instances of the numerous possibilities for using soil gel and co-precipitation methods. The article discusses the synthesis of aluminum nanostructures through two different approaches, soil gel and co-precipitation. The chemical composition of the materials is primarily alumina, with starting materials including aluminum trichloride, ethanol, and ammonia solution as a precipitant agent. The microstructures of the materials was analyzed using XRD, bed analysis, and TEM imaging. XRD analysis showed the formation of gamma alumina and alpha alumina phases at different temperatures, with soldier process requiring higher temperatures for gamma crystallization compared to the precipitation method. Bet analysis was used to calculate the specific surface area and particle size of the materials, while the EM imaging revealed different shapes and sizes 
of aluminum particles synthesized by co precipitation and soldier methods. FTIR spectroscopy was also used to study the presence of organic materials and phase conversion. Overall, the article provides a detailed analysis of the chemical and microstructural properties of the fabricated alumina nanostructures. For the synthesis process, the soldier technique is a wet chemical method used for the fabrication of glassy and ceramic materials, particularly metal oxides such as silicon and titanium oxides. The synthesis process involves several steps. There are seven steps involving this soldier technique process. First is hydrolysis. It is the precursor of the metal oxide is hydrolyzed in water or with the help of alcohol to create a salt. Second is the polycondensation. The salt undergoes polycondensation resulting in a gel-like network that contains both liquid and solid phases. Third is the gelation. The salt changes into a gel which is a semi-solid state with a three-dimensional network structure. Fourth is aging. The gel, the gel is left to age during which its structure and properties may change. The fit is dry, the liquid phase is removed from the gel, leaving behind the porous solid materials. For six is densification. The, the porous solid is heated to remove any remaining solvent and to increase its density and the final process is the crystallization. The densified materials is further heated to cause crystallization which resulting in the final product of the sol gel synthesis process. The co-precipitation technique is a simple, economical, and industrially viable method for synthesizing metal oxide nanoparticles and other technologically important oxide materials. The step-by-step -step synthesis process of the co-precipitation technique is as follows. First is dissolving the metal salt, adding the base, formation of intermediate precipitates, precipitation, separation, drying, and lastly, calcination. Dissolving metal salts. Dissolve the metal salt precursor, commonly nitrate, chloride, or oxychloride in water or another appropriate solvent. Adding a base. Add a base such as sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide to the metal salt solution to precipitate and to precipitate, to precipitate the corresponding hydroxide. Formation of intermediate precipitates. The aim of the precipitation is to prepare multi-component materials through the formation of the intermediate, intermediate precipitates, usually hydrous oxides or oxalates, to achieve an intimate mixture of components and maintain chemical homogeneity upon calcination. Precipitation. The base acts as a precipitant agent causing the formation of precipitates in the solution. Separation. So separate the pre precipitates from the solution typically by filtration or centrifugation. Dry. Dry the precipitates to remove any remaining solvent. And lastly, calcination. So heat dried precipitates to convert them into the desired oxide material. Maintaining chemical homogeneity by adjusting parameters such as pH, precipitating agent, temperature, and solvents, it is possible to tailor the process of the obtained nano or micron-sized particles. The co-precipitation method is widely employed for the synthesis and offers the advantages of producing smaller crystalline sizes compared to other synthesizing techniques. Solvent characterization technique includes FTR spectroscopy (XRD). TAM and bit analysis. These techniques have been used to investigate the structural changes, crystal structure and phase porosity, morphology and structure, and surface area and porosity of sol gel synthesized materials in various studies. While co precipitation characterization technique includes SEM, EDS, XRD, and VSM, and these techniques have been used to investigate morphology and structure, chemical composition, structure crystal structure and phase porosity and magnetic properties of co materials in various studies. So these techniques are essential for understanding the properties and structures of materials synthesized using sol gel and co methods. The sol gel method is a technique used for preparing advanced ceramic materials with unique properties. The properties of the ceramic material depend on factors such as the precursor, processing conditions, and post treatment. The sol gel method produces ceramic materials with high purity homogeneity, surface area, and control porosity. It also allows for tailoring of the microstructure to achieve properties such as high mechanical strength and, and enhanced optical properties. This makes the soldier method a powerful and versatile technique for producing advanced ceramic materials for a wide range of applications. Co-precipitation is a method for synthesizing advanced ceramic materials by mixing metal salts under controlled conditions. The resulting materials has desirable properties such as high purity, homogeneous composition, fine particle size, high surface area, controlled morphology, 
and tailored properties. These properties make this ceramic material suitable for various applications such as electronics, energy storage, and catalysis. The synthesis condition can be adjusted to tailor the properties of the ceramic material to meet the specific application requirements. For current researches, 2013 up to present, the first this is the article about ultra high temperature ceramics or the UH thesis under production using the sol, sol gel process. The UH thesis are materials that, that have melting points above 3000 degrees Celsius and exhibit exceptional thermal stability, high melting points, and superior mechanical properties. These properties can make them ideal for use in harsh environments. The sol gel technique is a method for producing UH thesis that has several advantages. This article also discussed recent advancement in soldier research related to UH thesis including the use in energy storage and conversion devices. The second article is this article discusses a new co-precipitation method for producing high quality, the SRF to transparency run. This, met the this method uses two distinct co-precipitation techniques to synthesize in the SRF to nanoparticles with exceptional purity and, and uniformity. The nanoparticles are then hot pressed to create transparent ceramics with high optical quality and excellent mechanical properties. So this new method is cost effective and scalable. This article also provides insights into the mechanism of the core precipitation process and its potential for producing advanced ceramics with tailored properties. According to a report by BCC Research, the U.S. market allowed for soldier processing in ceramics and glass is expected to reach $500 million by 2011. This market is growing at an average rate of 8.7% per year. So with this data, by 2023, the soldier processing in ceramics and glass is estimated to become a billion dollar industry. Soldier processing is a popular method for creating glass shapes because it can make anything from a simple to very complex designs. This has helped make it part of a billion or even a multi-billion dollar market. As for the co-precipitation method, we don't have any specific numbers. But figuring out the unique cost of using co-precipitation in advanced ceramics involves a lot of different things. We have to take account the size of the facility and how much is being produced, as well as the cost of the raw materials. Then there are things like labor and energy cost and other little, de and other little details to consider. It takes someone with a lot of knowledge to get everything balanced just right. Welcome to the world of ceramics engineering at MSU IIT, where students embark on an incredible journey. We'll explore the activities that shape our path, engaging lectures, hands-on training at the Ceramic Training Center, valuable OGT opportunities, and enlightening seminars and webinars. At MSU IIT, passionate professors deliver captivating lectures fostering a deep understanding of ceramic engineering. Students delve into topics like ceramics chemistry, physics, and manufacturing techniques. These lectures build a solid foundation for their journey. The Ceramic Training Center provides hands-on experience. Equipped with cutting-edge facilities, students engage in experiments from mixing materials to shaping and firing ceramics. This training enhances their skills and confidence. OGT offers real-world exposure. Students work with professionals contributing to the designing of prototypes and performing quality control tests. These practical experiences prepares them for their future careers. Seminars and webinars expand students' horizons. Experts share advancement and insights, exposing them to emerging trends. These events nurture a lifelong learning mindset. At MSU IIT, students strive through engaging lectures, practical training, real-world exposure, and continuous learning. This transformative journey shapes their path in ceramic engineering. So, if you are ready to embark on an incredible educational adventure in ceramic engineering at MSU IIT, 
then get ready to unleash your creativity and shape a future filled with endless possibilities.